Now, we all love the Fast and Furious franchise, don't we? A good example on how people will go the extra mile to ensure that their car's performance is top notch. Well, here at home, we have a gentleman by the name Calvin D'Souza, a car fabricator whose story is so inspiring, passion so intoxicating, and creations, well, so fascinating that will blow your mind. I know this is a whole new experience, so right now, let's talk about cars and powerful engines. Enjoy! It's a remarkable craft of transforming grounded or sometimes in-use cars into powerful, sleek and beautiful works of art. In a field where upgrades, tuning and performance are the blueprint, car fabricators are required to bring their hands and brains. My name is Calvin D'Souza. I basically refurbish and modify older vehicles with new tech. So big engines, bigger suspension, bigger gearboxes, with all the model, modern luxuries of today you know so basically I take all these older cars that have been sitting around in people's yards for years and years and haven't moved you know their their components are all rusted the engines don't work anymore so I try and bring those cars back to life by putting new engines in them new brakes new suspension so that you can use them on our on our roads from day to day there's very different uh, motorsports disciplines nowadays um, they are set with their specifications on how you can build that car, how you can drive that car. But nowadays in Kenya, we've got the Masinga TT, we've got the Delta Motorsports one, which it's, doesn't really have any specifications on what you can drive or how much performance you can. So now that's where these kind of cars, they'll be able to fit in. Because they're drift cars, they're drag cars, they're Gymkhana cars. Cars like these ones are all rounder. You know, you can drift it, you can Gymkhana it, you can drag it if you want, and you're not held back by rules and regulations of the, the, the sport like rallying has, like um, autocross has, you know. A unique approach to parenting instituted by his father is what introduced D'Souza to the world of engineering, who gradually shadowed on the steps laid for him. My dad's a mechanic. He was modifying way before he, I even knew what modification was. And growing up, you know, your dad is always your dad. You're very afraid of your dad. And our punishment when we never used to do very well in school was you have to spend your holidays with your dad. So that's where now it started to grow. So I used to watch the things that he did. And, uh, you know, we would go away for the weekend with some of the cars he would modify and he would race other cars. And then people would follow him around and be like, what engine is that? What car is this? Nee, nee, nee. So the hype started, you know. And that's where I think this really picked up from. And then slowly, slowly I started to learn. I think I began maybe my early 20s when I really started getting into actually helping, building, giving my ideas to build a car. And then from when I was 24, 25 is when I now started getting into some of these motorsports events and, you know, building my cars now for those. Just like actual manufacturing, the process of fabricating and tuning cars is somewhat similar. It all starts in the artist's heads with a clear picture of what he wants, to the drawing board, and eventually to the work itself. Testing whatever he created soon ensues. So this is very important, I'll tell you, huh? because many people go wrong with building cars and then they find halfway they're stuck and the project stops. All my builds start in my head. I build it, I see all the problems that I could face because now again we go back to experience. All the problems I'm going to face with where things fit, how things are going to pass, how I'm going to be able to fit in the car. So it's built in my head first. So by the time now we start building, when we reach that challenge, you already know how to tackle it. You don't spend another two months thinking how are you going to be able to go around it because then your morale goes, you spent your money somewhere else, that project is eventually going to die. And nine times out of ten, that is what's stopping people from building. It's when they reach a certain challenge, they can't, then they, they, let, they let it go. Yeah? So I, I usually start by building it in my head and then I lay everything on the ground. So <clears throat> if it's a car that I'm building entirely for, from scratch for motorsports, I, have my, I always begin with my two seats so I know where I'm sitting. I know where my pedals are going to be. I know where the tires are going to be, where the engine is going to sit, where the gearbox is going to sit, where the lever is going to sit. So everything's built down on the ground first. And then, so you know when you put it together, you don't come across any challenges where the engine's too close to your feet or too far away or the steering's too far or too much to the left. So this, it was originally a 1938 Fordson tractor. 
So most of the front was a, tra was a tractor part of it. The rest had all the agricultural equipment at the back and, you know, all the plows and stuff that he was pulling. And I found this lying in somebody's yard and it's been sitting since then. It was only used for about two years and it's just been sitting. So this was a very fun project actually because I've always wanted to build a pickup and a mid-engine powered pickup. So this car that you're looking at is mid-engine. It's got a V8, it's a 3UZ, it's a 4.7 litre. It's a straight pipe. For those of you that don't know what that means, it doesn't have any silences on it. Uh, it will be fully tunable. This car I expect, not expect, but the, the idea behind this build, besides it being a mid-engine, I wanted it to be the first car to wheelie when you accelerate. You know, like you see in the States, these cars, when they get off the drag line, the front lifts off. So I want this one to be one of the first cars in, in Kenya to, to do that. For this one, we're going, to, we're going to try and aim for 800, yeah? It doesn't sound like much to the people out there who are tuning big numbers, but it's a very, very light car. So 800 power to weight ratio, I will be extremely, extremely quick. Testing is always bittersweet. I tell you, for everybody that's building cars, it's always bittersweet. Because some things work, some things don't work. And you know, the things which don't work are the most tiresome things because now going back to rebuild all those things, it's very difficult. But it's bittersweet because the car's finally moving. You can feel what it drives like. You can hear what it sounds like. You feel all the vibrations. You feel the power for the first time. So it makes it worthwhile all those months, all the money that you've spent. But the stuff that doesn't work is now the stuff that starts to eat you. If it works, then good, good enough. Uh, most people, yes, they're happy that it works and they're happy with that and that's it. But we always try to go a bit further to try and make it better than it already is. So uh, bigger drivetrains, you know, more powerful engine components and stuff like that. So once it's working, that's just base for us. For other people, they're okay with it being just base. But now from there is where we take it now to the next level. Experience is indeed the best teacher. What is even more fascinating is the fact that the artist didn't have to attend a school program to learn all he knows. This, he says, has given him room to explore and go beyond the set boundaries. No, I didn't go to school. This is all experience. So lucky for me, I have a good foundation. I got some experience from my dad who told me the do's and don'ts. And then from there, I took it further. But then I feel that I'm actually glad I never learned this kind of stuff in school because I see some of the people around me who did go, to, who do have an engineering background or went to a college or school to learn engineering, they're very blocked off to go, to think out of the box because then they're taught it has to be this way. It has to be done in a certain way for it to work. But us guys who have learned through experience, there's always a way around it, an easier way or a better way, you get. So the pictures that are on the wall, these are cars that we have done in the past. We have built for motorsports, for customers, for ourselves. So starting from the very first ones we built up to the ones we built like very recently. And if you look at the pictures closely, you can see the evolution of the cars and as well as us as, uh, I don't want to say as a company, but us as, as builders. Because the first, first cars we were doing, we were going very safe and nothing too big. And you know, we were going very heavy on body, mount, and body mounts, engine mounts, when it was not necessary. And we learned along the way. And now you see our cars are getting a lot faster, a lot lighter, a lot neater, you know, prettier. Our older cars were very beaten up, you know, because we were using them only for motorsport. So you say, I will bang it anyway. I'm going to break it anyway. So why must it look pretty? But you can see the evolution in the pictures. We also started out with mainly 4x4s because that time I was doing a lot of these 4x4 events. And then we slowly, slowly started doing hot rods and we started doing like these more like these newer performance cars like the Miatas, a few Subarus here and there. It goes without saying that driving such cars is bound to arouse curiosity and attention from various people who would like to know more about them. This, something the artist has welcome and is very casual and engaging about. I get stopped quite often by the police starters because they just want to look at it. They want to see how is this car still on the road. It's actually a good conversation, very different from the norm with the police, because usually when you get stopped in your regular car, you know you're going to get harassed. This one's actually quite pleasant to have a conversation with the policeman. It brings him a little more down to earth. And you know, having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, these cars are very good for that, because people who are driving Mercedes, they also want to know about it. Girls want to know about it. Guys want to know about it. Young, old, 
it's a very good conversation started. Financial input is required to sustain what many will term as an expensive hobby. Be that as it may, the artist strongly shuns the belief that the craft is only reserved for the upper echelon, but can be done by anyone so long as the passion and discipline is high. When it comes to money, we all have to hustle some way or the other. And I always remember my boss telling me that Richard Branson says if you don't have at least three forms of income, you're not really working. So for me, there are a lot of things that I've branched off into besides mechanics that I make money from. And that's where my money comes for my passion. It doesn't all come from just my business. What I'm doing, my nine to five, it's not coming from there. So we have to hustle and hustle hard. You know, us guys who are building cars, it's a very, very expensive uh, hobby. And the guys who are just, you know, chotting money here, the little, little money, their projects, they never work out the way they want. And that's where, like I say, the dream dies there then they will never pick up another project car. I'm trying to get these kind of bills out there more because there's a very bad perception to all the younger guys especially that this uh, passion is reserved for the elite of this country, people who have money, and it's not true. And they also think that, oh, this is all done in the States and it cannot be done in Kenya. You know, they, they, it's, it's very difficult for someone out there to understand that this is actually attainable. So the reason that I'm trying to push these bills is because Anybody can do it, literally. You can go to your local junkyard dealer, you can go to your mechanic, get a few parts here and there. It's, it starts in your brain. You know, if you have a very good idea of what you want to achieve, there are people out there who will help you. And guys who are, like in this industry, mechanics, they are very open-minded to helping others out, you get. So speak to your mechanic, you know, speak to your uncles, your aunties who have cars lying around. They'll give it to you for free, if not for cheap. You know, so it's, it's, it's very easy to start. Me, I'm very lucky to have a background from uh, and like uh, a good base from my dad. But it's not that difficult for someone to start off who doesn't even know anything about cars. You get. You can go and sit at your local workshop, the Joe Kalis, they will, they will teach you or you can sit around and learn. So I don't want people to be discouraged and think that this is only for the Muzungus and the Indians of this kind. It's not true. It's not true. Imagine most of my friends who are building cars, they're also Kenyans. They also never went to school. They're also not from rich families, you get. But they have a passion. They wait one month, they buy a caliper and a disc. Another month, they buy another, another one, you know. By the end of two years, they've got enough stuff to put a car together. And that's what it is, it's just your passion. It is the artist's goal to see that Kenya enters the luxury supercar market one day through one of his own flagships. I built the hot rod. You guys have seen the hot rod. That car is fully handmade. That car is made entirely the way I wanted it to be. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted a car that looked like that, that sounded like that, that had that engine in it. So that car is now my baby, yeah? Now when you ask me what's next for that, I think to push myself to the limit, I would like to build Kenya's first luxury sports car. The Lamborghinis, the Ferraris of the world, I think we can do it here. We've got the technology, we've got the people, we've got the labor. So I think that would probably be, be next year's, mid next year's project would be first luxury supercar for Kenya, stroke Africa. You can find me on my Instagram handle, it's Calvin D'Souza, or my Facebook, and I promise you I reply to all my inboxes, I get hundreds and hundreds a day. I will chat with you, I will never push you aside, because even some issues I've had with most of the people that I follow abroad and stuff, is they never reply, they don't have time for the small people, I was also a small once, so I do, even as of now, I reply to everybody in my inbox. No matter how, if, no matter how silly you think your question is, it's not silly to me. Tanuki, me, I'm coming for you. I'm telling you, that, that 1700 horsepower you're looking for, I'm coming. Slowly, slowly, but I'm there. So I think I admire a lot of the people who are building cars in this country. There are companies like IPP, there's uh, Sharp Auto up in Karen. We're all very different in the way we build our cars and I think we all admire each other because there are some things which they do, I cannot do. There are also the people who are restoring these old cars for concours and stuff. I'm really not that good at, I'm not a stickler for detail like they are and I admire their work for, for being able to get the right screw, the right fitting, the hole exactly where it should be. So I admire a lot of the people out there who are also building cars and who look up to me. I'm also looking up to them. I know I did mention the Fast and Furious at the beginning, but I also feel like we have lived through the Mad Max as well. Let us hit the brakes, take a break, and I will see you shortly.